Hey, hey, been a busy morning, I guess. Bit of a busy morning, yes. Nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> L- lovely to meet you. Um, yeah. I, w- I guess I want to say I-, I loved Prey. I thought it was amazing. And I've kind of want to thank you for giving me the film that I've been waiting for since that ending in uh, Predator 2 when Danny Glover got that flintlock pistol. It's kind of that, that little seed was planted in my little mind as a teenager. And I kind of want to thank you for kind of fulfilling that dream there, I guess. <laughs> yeah, uh, likewise. I mean, the seed was was planted in mine as well. Um, so yeah, that, that was the thrill was to finally make the movie that that um, teased. And I read that you're a big fan of the original 87 film. Did it? What did you like about that? And what in what ways did you kind of how did Predator 1 and 2 kind of influence you? Well, quite specifically uh, in, in the original um because I, I i wasn't allowed to watch r-rated movies as a kid um <laughs> so uh i remember distinctly being in third grade and was in a carpool on the way to a karate tournament all the sixth graders had all just seen predator and they described <laughs> the entire movie to me including a moment where they said billy the native american tracker fights the predator on a bridge over a waterfall um <laughs> And then I eventually saw the movie and that scene is not in it. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, you just, it's, it's basically implied off camera. Yeah. So um, this, the seed uh, for this movie specifically was planted even in the 87 film. Um, and, uh, and I've been dreaming about making something like this ever since really. It sounds, that sounds like a movie in itself about you going to a karate tournament and then being inspired <laughs> by predator to, uh, to win that's very Cobra Kai oh, yeah I got I definitely remember getting fourth place and getting a medal and it being feeling like really like this doesn't mean anything <laughs> but uh yeah so I don't know how good that movie would have been why do you think that the predator the character of the predators lasted so long and kind of continues to be this this kind of fictional character that people still kind of love and still kind of want to see films about um I, I think most of it can be attributed to the design of the creature. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I got messaged by a father and daughter um, when this movie was announced and, the, and they're both um, in predator costume and the eight year old <laughs> daughter um, said in the message that like, I'm so excited for your movie. Uh, the predator is my favorite movie. I've never seen it, but it's my favorite. Movie. <laughs> Um, and I think, yeah, it's just the design of that creature, um, by Stan Winston originally really captured, uh, just sort of like hit the, just like the Xenomorph, um, mm. before it, it just like plucks the right strings from an aesthetic standpoint. And I think really nailed the thing that's very hard in designing alien creatures, um, in making something that feels advanced and sentient um, uh, and bipedal um, and somewhat humanistic, humanoid, um, while also feeling alien. Mm. Um, And that's something that I really wanted to embrace with this movie is make our creature feel much more alien and creature-like now that we're not limited by as many things as we as we were in 1987, um, I feel like sometimes bits of the other films have sort of rested on the laurels of the original de- design. And I really wanted to give that excitement back. Um, so even diehard fans of the franchise um, can feel surprised again when they see mm. different stages of the predator creature in this movie. Yeah what you do so brilliantly is the build up to that is how you keep him cloaked for quite a long time. But I mean, because the technology is advanced, the cloaking just looks so good. But also what I liked about the cloaking was you, you made basically every shot, every shot there was kind of danger. There was almost like you, sometimes I was almost looking for is the predator even there? Mm-hmm. Like, and mm-hmm. I guess sometimes he is there, sometimes he isn't, but I just loved how you did that with attention. And it, and it brought back that tension that I think, like you say, it's kind of been missing from some of the later films because you kind of know what to expect. Yes. Yeah. Even, and even, even I'll just say about the cloak, like it, it doesn't work that well. Um, it fritzes in and out uh, quite often. Um, so, it, but 
because we've made this movie in um, 2022, uh, it, it is rendered with more modern sensibilities. So it's this interesting mishmash that frankly I used Rogue One as a um, as a signpost because Rogue One um, really re-embraced the original se- 70s mm-hmm. vibe to Star Wars design, yeah. but it was all rendered with modern sensibilities. Um, mm. So we try to do the same in that this feels like it, it would be prototypical um in the technology but the way in which it's it's aesthetically rendered is pretty and interesting and slightly more modern and how did you go about the kind of so the predator design like you say it is it is quite different there are different weapons it's very interesting you can almost see like the progression of the weapons there that must have been quite a big challenge to do something that is advanced but also backwards from the advancement that we've seen that that must have been very hard absolutely one of the biggest challenges and and only made harder in that because as i said before i really wanted to feel much more creature like and so for me that meant removing most of its armor um Mm. uh so that you could see the form and the skin more and that meant that a lot of the weight of the storytelling and saying this is older but still advanced was all on the weaponry and how mm-hmm. those things were uh, rendered. So it was, it was a challenge, um, but I think it bred some really fun, cool new toys. And oh yeah, and the, yeah the, the lack of armor in particular is what created um, the idea for giving him a shield um, because yeah. it's not armored. He needs another way to protect himself, but then that shield um uh is used in very fun ways and um and still feels uh like it's a combination of old and new as well so Mm. once the screening ended i almost wanted it to start again so i could then concentrate on seeing those weapons because you you show a lot but it, it, it doesn't kind of like it doesn't dwell on them. He's just using them, just going through them, like almost like like he would, like a warrior would, which totally. I think is brilliant. Because yeah, you just want to watch again and try and really uh, like the net bomb and just all those. You just want to see it all again to really concentrate on it. No, I loved it. it so the design was amazing, and I think he really achieved that. Yeah, he, he it's more animalistic. It's more it's more scary in a way. I mean, it, it's a it feels like a more scary being. Um, yeah, yeah, that definitely. was the for sure. Yeah. Uh, Amber uh, Mid Thunder was was amazing. I thought she was great. In how did, how did you come out kind of casting her? But also, what makes her different to the kind of muscle bound guys that we've seen go against the Predator kind of time and again in the other film? I think uh, she and the character that she plays is far more relatable. I think the muscle bound guy um, reflects a different kind of excitement in movies where it's much more wish fulfillment when we see Arnold and all the other uh, 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 leading men of the eighties uh, mm. it's, it was always like, Oh my God, I, I wish that I could look like that um, and dispatch of bad guys in the way that he can dispatch <laughs> of bad guys. Um, it would never felt like, Oh, I feel that I feel your brother, <laughs> like, you know, um, yeah, what what Nadu goes through in this movie, I think, is uh, a very universal experience of, of feeling like you could do something, um, but everyone around you doesn't think you can. And and there may even be moments where you yourself de- question it as well. And you're desperate to to prove otherwise. I think that is that is um, something that all of us go through and makes the fight for accomplishing it so much more captivating and intense Um, to see that kind of character fight with, you know, blood, sweat, and tears to Mm. make something happen. Um, And it's so much more rootable and, yeah, I mean, when, when Amber first auditioned, she was able to communicate so much non-verbally. And this movie is largely told through action. Mm. And even when she did, there was a sort of a physical component to her audition. And she never just was like crawling and leaping and running and doing all the activities that we had set up. She was still 
storytelling and still finding the emotional beats inside those movements, which is yeah. exactly what this movie needed. So yeah, um, we were very lucky to have her in the movie for sure. I know a lot of it was the entire production was kind of filmed outside. What was it like doing something so different, like to you're filming outside rather than being in a studio or, you know, having that, that kind of safety net around you? Yeah, it was almost entirely outside. Frankly, I tried as best I could because it can be very overwhelming. Like you can do anything with a camera. You could look anywhere, look at all of the trees. They all look the same, you know? <laughs> really try to find a way to still make the, feel, the movie feel authored and designed and contained the way that, so that we could build suspense the way that you expect suspense to build in a Hitchcock film um, or things like that. So I try to not let myself get overwhelmed um, by the outdoors. And of course, there are key moments where we really do embrace the breath and the grandness of the landscape, mm -hmm. um, but also wanted to make sure we were focused on suspense building and uh and the the character beats the, and the emotional centers of every scene um that would then reflect the filmmaking that we chose uh mm. so um it's it's definitely harder with a canvas like um alberta um but uh i i felt lucky that we were able to capture so much beauty um while we were there and then and still had the the film um feel like it's got a real driving force in it yeah yeah no definitely no like i say it's a brilliant film and it's 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 great that it's so different to all the others final thing i guess a quick one is there any other time period that you'd love to see the predator pop up in man uh there's so many that would be so <laughs> cool. um but I think if I were to say anything, it might be taken as as oh. uh, a sign of something that it, that it shouldn't be. So I'm <laughs> going to refrain from giving any specifics. Oh, okay. But I, I do think uh, there's lots of cool places to see a, a predator in, for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you for giving us one of those places. Thank you so much. And yeah, Thanks, good luck with whatever you're doing next. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. Thank you.